for this Mass for the deceased members of the Salerno family. And we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually parts of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us exercise them. In prof if prophecy, in proportion to the faith, if ministry, in ministering, if one is a teacher, in teaching, if one exhorts in exhortation, if one contributes in generosity, if one is over others with diligence, if one does acts of mercy with cheerfulness, let love be sincere. Hate what is evil, hold on to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection Anticipate one another in showing honor. Do not grow slack in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Endure in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the holy ones. Exercise hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Have the same regard for one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. The word of the Lord. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. 
O Lord, my heart is not proud, nor are my eyes haughty. I busy not myself with great things, nor with things too sublime for me. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. Nay, rather, I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child. Like a weaned child on its mother's lap, so is my soul within me. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. O Israel, hope in the Lord, both now and forever. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One of those a table with Jesus said to him, Blessed is the one who will dine in the kingdom of God. He replied to him, A man gave a great dinner to which he invited many. When the time for the dinner came, he dispatched his servant to say to those invite, come, everything is now ready. But one by one, they all began to excuse themselves. The first said to him, I have purchased a I filed and must who to assemble it. I ask you, consider me excused. And another, another said, I have purchased five yoke of oxen and am on my way to evaluate them. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have just married a woman, and therefore I cannot come. The servant went and reported this to his master. Then the master of the house, in a rage, comment his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring him here the poor and the crippled, the blind and the lame. The servant report, sir, your orders have been carried out and still there is room. The master then ordered the servant, go out to highways and make people come in that my home may be fire filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited will taste my dinner. The Gospel of the Lord. I tell you, when I was learning Spanish, uh, one of the greatest ways that I learned was by reading 
uh, at Mass, but I didn't have to do it in front of an audience of thousands on Net TV. Uh, and so what a great honor it is and great uh, encouragement for Father Vicente to keep practicing his English as he learns English. Uh, but he's really doing it in the, in the fire, right? We're putting him right, throwing him right into the deep end of the pool. So uh, he's doing great in his continued learning uh, of, of English. Today, uh, our gospel uh, speaks of, of those who were invited to this great dinner all had their own excuses of why they couldn't come. Uh, one said that he had just recently uh, purchased a field and he has to go examine it. Another had purchased five o yoke of oxen uh, and had to attend and evaluate them. The other had just married a woman uh, and therefore could not come. Uh, and they all gave their excuses one by one why they couldn't attend. Think of the excuses that we make, all right, uh, for the reasons why we can't attend Mass, why we can't uh, attend this banquet of which we're all invited, uh, not just daily, which is, the, is an optional invitation, uh, but certainly on the days in which we're to honor the Sabbath, keep holy the Sabbath, and, and, and be present with the Lord uh, for his invitation. It's an invitation. I think that that's an, a, a way in which perhaps in our uh, teaching of the faith over the years, uh, you know, w w it was more of something, it wasn't even an invitation, it was, it was, it was presented as something that you were forced to be at, right? And if you're forced to be at something, uh, you say, uh, as a child, certainly, you say, I don't want to go where I'm forced to go. I want to go where I want to go. Uh, and we say that also as we grow up, except we just don't have our parents to force us uh, to do it. How many children come to Mass, myself included, when I was a child? Because I was forced to be there. My parents told me, I have to be there. You have to go. Uh, and, and, and maybe even uh, my religious education uh, instructors made me be there. Uh, and, and sometimes I'm even guilty of it, uh, asking our children to have their bulletins signed, uh, their Sunday bulletins signed by the priest. That's basically, it's not an invitation to Sunday Mass, it's you're being forced to go to Sunday Mass. The invita it's, it's an invitation. Uh, and the more we understand that, the more uh, then hopefully we're prone to accept that invitation. It's a, it's a free invitation to this banquet, to this celestial uh, dinner of which we are nourished by word uh, and uh, by a, a source of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, truly present uh, in the Eucharist. It's an invitation. And, and with that invitation, then think about now all of the excuses that we make uh, of why we cannot attend or why we cannot accept that invitation. I'm so busy during the week. Sunday's my only day to myself. My children have soccer practice or, 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 or basketball or, 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 or all of the sports in which they're pushed, pulled in so many different directions. We have dance practice. We have all the, I have to do my grocery shopping. It's the only day I can go visit my, my family or my friends. It's the, it, you know, there's all the excuses. The worst being, you know, there's a sports game on. I, 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 my goodness, you know, even priests can be guilty of saying at times, you know, I'm gonna make this quick because I know the Jets are playing today that's that's crazy we're not you know I, I'm not getting in the way of a Jets game this is much more important uh, than uh, what anything that else we, we could be doing or all of the other excuses and so the master then sends out uh, and of course says invite all those invite everyone go to the highways and the hedge grows and and go and find people and invite them uh, to my uh, this banquet this great dinner because those, I tell you, those who were invited, none of those who, who were invited will taste my dinner. Uh, it's, a, it's an act of love. It's an invitation through love. And we respond in love. We respond to that invitation in love because we love God, because we love our Lord Jesus Christ, because we love our relationship uh, and we want to strengthen our relationship with our Lord and our Savior. The first reading uh, today, I think would make a great reading for weddings. Uh, 
You know, unfortunately, uh, they're, they're, well, fortunately and unfortunately, there's a book uh, that we give to couples as they prepare for their wedding. And uh, in it, it has all of the options of, of the readings, first readings from the Old Testament, the second readings from the New Testament, and the Gospels. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, when you get to the New Testament reading, of course, everyone uh, thinks that they're the first to choose it, but uh, they're not. Uh, the reading from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, it does not brood, it is, and, and it's a beautiful, absolutely beautiful reading, and it's a perfect reading for weddings, it is. Uh, but this would make a great reading. It's not one of the choices in the book, but it would make a great reading, and it certainly could be used. Let love be sincere. Hate what is evil, hold on to one, what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Anticipate one another in showing honor. Rejoice in hope, endure in affliction, persevere in prayer. St. Paul is writing this to the Romans. He's writing, them, writing it to them individually uh, as they individually would read it. But imagine telling a couple, anticipate one another love one another with mutual affection, rejoice in hope, endure in affliction, persevere in prayer. That's the beauty of the sacrament of marriage. That's the beauty of that covenant in which uh, men and women share is that they just decide with God's grace and, and with the free act of the will to love one another, to let their love be sincere, to rejoice in hope, to persevere in prayer, to endure in affliction, through good times and bad, in sickness and in health. That covenant, that love in which uh, they share as humans is a, is a reflection of the covenant, the promise that God has made to each and every one of us, that God promises to us to love us in good times and in bad, to be true to us in sickness and in health. And we make that promise back to God. Let us uh, today, as we reflect on our readings and as we reflect on the great gift, this great invitation that the Lord has given us, let us uh, make a promise today to t not take that invitation for granted, to not take this, the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist for granted. When we take it for granted, that's when, 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 we, when, we, 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 when we forget, we forget excuse me, that's when we forget uh, all the good that the Lord has, has given us and wishes to give us. And so we pray that our love may be sincere for one another and for our God, and that we may continue to respond generously to his invitation. Amen. We stand now and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Brennan, for all those in positions of authority in the church that they may continue to lead with charity uh, and with clarity, we pray to the Lord. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that more men and women may have the courage to serve God and God's church, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are sick and suffering, for all those who minister to them, May those who are sick and suffering know of the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in their midst, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially in this month of November, a month of remembrance and prayer, we pray for all the souls of the faithful departed, for all those uh, souls in purgatory, and for all those who have no one to pray for them, that they, all the souls of the faithful departed, may soon enjoy the rewards of the eternal banquet, that the invitation that the Lord has given them, we pray to the Lord. On this day, uh, on the, of election day, as we as gather together as, as citizens of this great nation, we recognize the great gift it is to vote and to be a part of this dem democracy in our country. We pray for all our elected leaders, that they may lead with love, w that they may continue to keep in their minds and their hearts the most vulnerable, the protection of all life from conception until natural death. We pray to the Lord. And for the deceased members of the Salerno family for whom I offer this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers which we bring before you and answer them if they be in accord with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome then into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, St. Joseph, who had pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, bring us the last time.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep in your prayers today, uh, the diocese, the priests and religious of the diocese will come together for a mass uh, in honor uh, uh, in prayer for all of the deceased priests, deacons and religious over this past year. Of course, we know November is a month of prayer for the dead. Uh, and so the priests, uh, and deacons and religious are also remembered in a special way throughout this uh, month. Uh, today, the priests and, and all those uh, faithful are invited uh, to, uh, to, for mass um, in uh, the Immaculate Conception Center in Douglaston, where we will remember all of those faithful departed. So please keep them uh, in your prayers as well this day as we as priests, as deacons and religious remember them in our hearts and in our prayers. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. So good to see so many of you here today. Praise to